to all of our sister congregations, it's a privilege to have you with us this evening and to fellow colleagues in the, in the gospel. We are grateful for your support. And if you're visiting with us and not a member of the Church of Christ, we just want you to know how honored we are to have you in our midst on this evening. Let me invite your attention tonight to a very familiar <coughs> passage of scripture. I want to invite your attention to the 16th chapter of the book of Matthews, and I want to read verse number 18 and verse number 19. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 18 and 19. The Bible says, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want you to think with me tonight from the subject, the church that Jesus built. The church that Jesus built. When Jesus came into the world, Jesus came into the world to save me. Listen to the Bible in Luke chapter number 19 and verse number 10. Jesus said, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Even before Jesus was born, mm -hmm. it was determined that he was going to save men from their sin. But listen to the Bible in Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 21. The Bible says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. Now notice that the text says that Jesus was going to save his people from their sins. Now, I got a question, church. Where was Jesus going to save individuals, and how would we know who are his people? Listen to the Bible, because if you are a savior, then you have to save somebody. Listen to the Bible in Ephesians chapter 5 yes, and verse number 23. Yes, the Bible says, for the husband mm -hmm. is the head of the wife, mm -hmm. even as Christ is the head of the church, mm -hmm. and he is the savior mm -hmm. of the body. Right. Now notice the text says that Christ is the savior of the body. But this had said that he was going to save his people from their sin. Right. Okay. Now notice the text says that he is the savior of the body. I got a question, church. What is the body? Right. Listen to the book in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 22. All right. The Bible says, and has put all things under his feet, gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him 
that filleth all in all. Amen. Now, what is the church? Well, right. The church is the body. Mm -hmm. What is Jesus going to say? He's going to save the church. Right. Who are the church? Right. His people right. who have been saved from their sin. Right. How do you know it, preacher? Right. Listen to the book right. in Ephesians chapter 2 yes, sir. and verse number 16. Yes, sir. The Bible says, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby. Now watch this church. Jesus reconciled man unto God in the church. Where are the saved people? In the church. How did they get there? Listen to the book. In Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 47, the Bible says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, watch this church because I have always wondered. Why in the world did Jesus decide to build his church? Well, when Jesus came into the world, there were worshipers of God already in the world. There was a church already in the world. Why in the world did Jesus decide to be a his church. Right. Because notice what Jesus said. He said, upon this rock, yes. I will be a my church. Yes. Right. I got a question, Jesus. What is your church? Well, Jesus said, I'm going to be a my assembly of the free born citizens. Because everybody who is in the church has been made free. Or oh, how do you know it, preacher? Well, Listen to the book in Romans chapter 6 yes, and verse number 17. Sorry, the Bible says, but God be thanked, ye were once the servants of sin. Yes, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you being then made free ye became the servants of righteousness now I got a question tonight because I hear individuals say that where we no longer need the church and any church will do but what I want to look at tonight, why in the world did Jesus decide to build his church? Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about the church, you are talking about individuals. Yes. How do you know it, preacher? Mm -hmm. Listen to the book in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 yes, sir. and verse number 27. Yes, sir. The Bible says, now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. Now, wait a minute, church. If the church refers to individuals, then what was Jesus saying that he was going to be. I intend to show tonight that when Jesus came into the world, religiously speaking, there were three groups of people. Number one, you had the Jew. Number two, you had the proselytes. And number three, you had the Gentile. Right. Now, watch this church. 
you have the Jews, you have the proselytes, and you have the Gentiles. So you have the Jewish people, you have the proselytes who live under those who were full of proselytes, the law of the Jews. And then you had the Gentiles. Now what are you going to do, Jesus? I'm going to be up my church. Now when you be up your church, Jesus, what are you going to do? I'm going to take these folks from down here and I'm going to put them up here in my assembly. Now I'm not going to create another group. I'm going to take these folk who will obey and put them up here. Oh, I got a question, church. Since the people already wish of God, why in the world did Jesus decide I'm going to be up my church? Now, I want to show you something that when Jesus said he was going to build his church, that was not God's first assembly. Oh, how do you know it, preacher? Listen to the book in Acts chapter number 7 and verse number 38. But let me go up one verse high. The Bible says this is that Moses which says that a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brother like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake unto him in the Mount Sinai and with our father and, and receive lively oracle right. to give unto us. Yes, now wait a minute, watch this now. Right. What was God's first church? Yes, it was the church of the Old Testament yes, that was in the wilderness. Yes, but I got a question, church. If you had people already worshiping God, why in the world? Would Jesus need to be up his church? And how was Jesus going to move these folk from these groups into the one group? Right. Now, now wait a minute, watch this now. There is only one church. Right. So how are you going to move them from down here to up here? Right. Well, number one. Each one of these groups had a law or a teaching right. by which they served God. Oh, yes, uh, now wait a minute. How do you know it, preacher? Well, number one, the Jews had a law. How do you know it? Talk for me, Moses. Yes, Exodus chapter 19, yes, verse number five. Yes, Exodus 19. Verse number five. Yes, sir. God said, now if you obey my voice yes, and keep my covenant, now ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, yes, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. This shall ye speak unto the children of Israel. Now the Jews had a law by which they served God. How do you know it, preacher? Listen to the book, right. Psalms 147, yes, verse number 19. The Bible says, Psalms 147, verse number 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and judgment unto Israel. Yes, he had not so dealt with any right. nature. Now watch this here now. For as for his judgment, they had not known them. Right. Now God gave the Jews what we call 
the Old Testament law, which was signaled by the Ten Commandments. Now, not only did the Jews have a law, but the proselytes were Gentiles who decided to live among the Jews. And if they were a full proselyte, they had to follow the same law as the Jews. Or oh, how do you know it, preacher? Listen to the book, Exodus chapter 12. Yes, sir. Verse number 48. Yes, sir. Exodus chapter 12. Yes, sir. Verse number 48. God said, when a stranger shall sojourn among you yes, and will keep the Passover of the Lord, yes, sir. let all his men yes, be circumcised. Yes, sir. Then let him come yes, sir. and keep it. Yes, oh, if I had time, yes, when individuals come in to God's church, they don't come in telling us what to do. Well, we already have the word. Yes, sir. They have to come in and learn what to do. Right. God said, let all his men yes, be circumcised. Yes, then let him come yes, and keep it, yes, for he shall be as one born in the land, no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof, and there shall be one law, both for the homeborn and for the stranger which sojourneth among you. Now wait a minute, watch this church. We have a law for the Jews. Yes, we have a law for the proselyte which was the law of the Jews. Yes. Now I got a question, church. What law did the Gentiles have well, and how in the world yes, did they receive their law? Well, now walk with me, church, because I said all three groups yes, sir. had a law by which they served God. Talk for me, Paul. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 2. That's it. Verse number 14. Yes, sir. In Romans chapter 2. Yes, sir. Verse number 14. Yes, sir. The Bible says, For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, what law didn't they have? They didn't have the law of Moses. Right. Yes, sir. God never told the Gentiles. Yes, to keep the Passover. No, sir. Because God never brought the Gentiles out of Egypt. Yes, the Bible says, for when the Gentiles, yes, sir. which have not the law, yes, sir. do by nature the things contained in the law, yes, sir. these without law are a law unto themselves, yes, which show the word of the law written in their heart and their consciousness also bearing witness and their thought, the meanwhile accusing or excusing one another. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Gentiles had a law which was written in their heart. I got a question, church. How in the world yes, sir. did God write the law yes, sir. in the hearts of the Gentiles? Come on. Now wait a minute, watch this now. I can't go any farther than the book. And don't ask me how God did it. I'm just going to show you what God did. Because God was able to use nature in order to teach the Gentiles about him. Oh, how do you know it, preacher? Talk for me, Paul. Yes, Romans chapter 1, yes, sir. verse number 18. Yes, sir. Paul said, Romans 1, mm -hmm. verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men which hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is clearly manifested unto them, being understood. By those things which are made. Well, watch this here now.
from the from the invisible things from creation or from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you doing, God? Yes, sir. Let me back up. Yes, sir. God manifests himself, for God has shown it unto them. Yes, sir. Now, what did you do, God? I took thee for the invisible thing yes, sir. of God from the creation of the world. Yes, sir. I clearly yes, sir. seen, being understood by the thing which are made. I got a question, yes, Jeff. How in the world did God reveal himself to the Gentiles? Yes. He took the things of nature, yes. and through the things of nature, yes. God allowed the Gentiles to know what they needed to know. Yes. Therefore, they were without excuse for not serving God Almighty. Right. Oh, if I had time. Whenever you hear individuals say that God is a good God, now let me be clear now. God is a good God. Yes, sir. We always need to remember God is a good God. Yes, sir. But if all I know about God yes, is that God is a good God, I don't know quite enough all right. because there is more to God yes, than just hollering out God is a good God. Yes, sir. Because just like God is a good God, yes, sir. you don't want to fall into the hand of, you don't want to fall into the hand of an angry God. Yes, sir. Because just like God is love, yes, God is also a consuming fire. Right. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a question, church. If the Jews had a law, if the proselytes followed the Jews' law, yes, sir. if the Gentiles had a law, yes, sir. how in the world is Jesus going to be his one church? Yes, sir. Well, Jesus then had to have a law Amen. that would supersede all of these other laws. Yes, and when this law was obeyed, then it would move them from down here to up here. Yes, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, preacher. What are you saying? That that this church also had to have a law. Yes, sir. And it was not and is not the law of Moses. Yes, sir. I know you hear folks say, well, all I got to do is just keep the Ten Commandments. Yes, sir. No ma'am and no sir. All right. See, under the Ten Commandments, it says, Thou shalt not bear false witness. But it did not say thou shalt not lie. And you see, you can tell a lie and not bear false witness against your neighbor. Wait a minute, church, I got a question. What was this new law? Come here, Jeremiah. Yes, sir. Jeremiah 31, verse number 31. That's it. The Bible said, Behold. Yes, sir. The days come, yes, says the Lord, yes, sir. when I shall make a new covenant That's all right. with the house of Israel yes. and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant yes, that I made with their father yes, sir. in the day yes, sir. that I took them by the hand yes, sir. to lead them out yes, sir. of the land of Egypt. Yes, sir. For my covenant they did bring, yes, sir. though I was an husband unto them. Yes, sir. God said, and after those days, yes, sir. God said, I am going to put my law yes, in their inward part. Yes, I am going to write upon their heart, and I shall be to them a God. They shall be to me a people. Neither shall any man teach his neighbor, saying, Know ye the Lord. Well, For all shall know me, yes, sir. from the least to the greatest. Now, I want y'all to watch this here now, because I used to wonder, Lord, what in the world do you mean when you said no man shall teach his neighbor, 
Know ye the Lord, well, for all shall know me, yes. from the least to the great. Yes, well, you see, when you were born a Jew, yes, you were born into God's family, yes, and you found out what it meant yes, to be a Jew, well, as you were taught when you got a little older. Uh, but in Jesus' church, all right. you are taught all right. before you are born. And once you get in, nobody has to tell you, know ye the Lord, because you have to know the Lord in order to get in.